$2,500 dental headlight. Well, it was about $2,500 originally with the battery pack. This one doesn't work at all and we thought we'd try to fix it. I initially started heating the case in a vise and here we're using a butane gas hot air device made by Worst. The protective mouthguard material ended up melting with the heat produced. Here we've got the case held directly into the vise and then we're heating it with the Worst burner. Leather is used to protect the main lens housing and we grip it with a pair of pliers. The heat allows the lens housing to be eventually unscrewed. The heat has to be extremely high because the glue they used is very strong. The lens housing is finally removed. The Heine light has a series of five lenses for focusing. Over the LED there's a black plastic which aligns the lens. The original LED is seen here and it's very secure. We're going to source the new LED from an eBay cheapie. The dental light, the cheapy one, can be found for under $20. The replacement Cree LED will fit the same housing because it's about the same size. So we use a multimeter set to diode test to see if the LED is faulty. So putting the multimeter probes on the good new LED shows that it's working and then we put it on the Heiner light and nothing's working it's dead as a dodo okay here I try and heat the housing to remove the Heiner LED board so we've got the heat right underneath it that proved really difficult and the LED board ended up breaking out in retrospect, I probably should have desoldered the wires and then tested the LED in case the wires were causing the problem. Here's the donor LED before we desolder it. I later found that the Heiner wire was also faulty when we put the new LED in. So the wire insert took so much heat to remove that I used a soldering iron stuck in there and a pair of pliers to undo the nut. So this shows that the nut was so tight that we couldn't take it off with our fingers. So we're in between turning it, we're heating it with the soldering iron as well. So these are all the parts of the original cord clamp which we won't use. We use a large drill bit to enlarge the hole to allow a thicker wire. We want the thicker wire because it's a lot stronger. Pliers can be used to pull the locating pins out so we can put the new LED board in. The hole's enlarged enough to allow the thicker wire to be used so we can see. Now we can thread it through like this. And then we make sure we put heatsink compound on the LED board before we insert it. We test the new LED. Yep, that works. The thicker wire will only just fit into the housing. I ended up taking the black plastic lens positioning device out because we couldn't screw the, the lens in properly. Here we're testing it. The new LED does have a slight halo around the outer edge. A slight halo is better than a completely non-working light. As you can see, we resulted in a successfully repaired light with a stronger cable. And thanks for watching.